So uh, today's complex environment and cyber threats, what does it mean? It means, you know, we are bringing on devices, new devices. So we have cloud computing intact. We have the social media. We have internet of things and new technologies are emerging day to day basis. So with that, good things, bad things comes. So we have so many attacks, exploits, viruses, trojans, you know, every day these things are coming into play. So as you know, the things are getting, uh, you know, complex and more and more cyber threats are coming toward. So what cyber threats attacks are more aggressive, complex and sophisticated, could be disgruntled disgruntled employee, crime rings, and nation state the result in massive data exposure. So cyber threats like could be deal with the, not only with some person like, uh, uh, um, you know, hacking from outside, it could be, you know, disgruntled employee as well, like some person inside the company who is unhappy with the, with the, with the company's policies. So he or she could, uh, become a threat for the um, for the company as so so whole idea behind this slide is as you know we are getting new and new technologies we are getting more and more threats so if i take you to this website very quickly and let me share that as well uh, can you see uh, by the way, can you see this uh, yes. website? Yes. Yeah. So now you can imagine what is going on and what is happening. World's biggest data breaches and hacks. So this is a website and the link is also in uh, the, uh, the presentation. And as you can see, how many breaches have been done from the Facebook? Wow. I don't know <laughs> what this count is. But you can see record lost phone numbers, full names, location, emails, addresses, and biogra biographical information on 50, 533 million users from 106 countries. So most likely your emails are already, you know, names Being are happy. already there. Exactly. So this is like, you know, if you want, you can go a lot in detail, like Indian citizens. So there are so many things. Brazil, uh, this experience, Brazil, Twitter, from the Twitter, how much data is being uh, stolen. And these, so these are like, you know, uh, the history and all information you can get from here. And by the way, this is in 2021. So I asked, what is CIA triad? So this is uh, like the very important uh, concept used in cybersecurity, the CIA triad, or three legs as well. It's also known as the three leg concept. So it is like confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And what confidentiality is, like ensure no unauthorized party has access to the information. So like, like in, in uh, your computer, do you want some outside intruder gain the access of your computer and uh, get the access of all your photos, videos, and these all things. So the most important part in CIA is confidentiality. So you want to secure everything. For example, the privacy solution is what? Encryption. And we know if we, if we familiar a little bit about the VPN, one of the most important part that is discussed in VPN is confidentiality. And the protocol that is used uh, to, to perform the conf confidentiality are like AES, DES, and 3DES. And these are the protocols that are also being used in the VPN as well for the encryption purpose. Then we have integrity, as Christelle said, that uh, 
um, whatever the data that is, uh, you know, going across the cable. So somebody intruder um, get that data and make some changes. So he or she can make some changes into that. So we do not want that as well. So ensure that the information is not altered in storage or while in a transit. So the mechanism that is used for integrity are MD5 or SHA. If I give you very quickly example of this one from the website, how MD5 basically look like, you can go to any website and type like MD5 hashing. Then for example, this is a MD5 hash generator. So basically what it will do, uh, let's suppose I type some data, uh, like, hello, how are you? And click on a generate. Now you will see this is like the hash is generated against this text. This one, which is MD5 hash. Another format is SHA-1. So that is a little bit uh, large because it's like, you know, uh, it use a, a better block size as compared to MD5. And this one is much more secure as compared to MD5. So these are the hash generated against these just one, two, three, four string value. Okay. So if I just copy this one and just to show you that, you know, just a minute. And I have pasted this one. And if I'll just put dot at the end and generate, it means somebody has, has altered this data. If you cannot see this one, I just make it like this one. So I just put the dot, that's it. And you will see the effect here. You know, this one has totally changed by the way. Uh, can you see the notepad? Yes. Yeah. So this one, when I type, how are you without dot? But you can see and notice that how, you know, the things have changed in MD5 just by putting one dot. So these mechanism are used, you know, uh, for the integrity of the data. So the, the data has not been changed in transit. Then we have the availability and we are familiar what availability is. I mean, the information or the resource is available to the authorized per person or the party when needed. So the example could be the load balance. For example, if uh, one system is down, we have another system already in a place so we have the data all right, always available there. So these things are known as a CIA triad. Then uh, let's talk about the defense in depth, also known as DID. So the challenge is there are so many threats and no single application can effectively manage these threats. Hence, layer approach is used to mitigate such issues. As you can see in the diagram, we have the data because this is the thing we want to secure all the time. So then we have this layered approach. We have application security on top of data. Then we have host security. Then we have network security best practices like hardening the switches, routers. Then we have parameter security. Like it is, if you have a very good visuals, it is mentioned like v, VLAN segmentations, IPS firewalls. Then we have this physical security 
basically like just like the lockers we have uh, could be cctv cams logs then non technical layer which is has to do with the policy planning and training so we have like the layered approach you know just to do what just to secure our data so that is the thing is known as uh, defense in depth So just it's uh, giving the definition defense in depth is use variety of methods to secure an organization like by firewall, we will use like firewalls, packet sniffer, packet shapers and spam filter and IPS, IDS, sensors and so many things, you know, just to protect our data. Then we'll talk about the threat classification. So basically we have mainly two threats one is internal and one is external internal i have already talked about the the threats that come from your own org organization and these are the most dangerous you know sometimes people think that external threats are uh, dangerous no the threats that are coming from our own organization are more dangerous why because people have a knowledge about that what servers you are using, what kind of application you are using. Uh, you can just plug even the USB drive in, into some other's uh, employee having some kind of viruses in that. So internal threats are more dangerous and you can deploy it easily. While the external threats, we know the threats that are coming from outside. Could be like denial of services or spam, something like that. So the potential threats are like hackers. We have white hat hackers. We have gray hat hackers and black hat hackers. And from the name, it suggests like black hat, something is uh, invisible. Means people, those are just doing some bad things are known as a black hat hackers. White uh, hat hackers basically, uh, organization hire or third party uh, people do outsource as well organizations do outsource as well for the white hat hack hackers and they will come to your organization and your uh, gm or ceo will you know brief him about whatever the device is being used in uh, your network and then he will run some kind of you know applications uh, that usually, you know, these uh, hackers, they use to just check whether the devices that are running in the organization are secure or no. So those are, people are good, known as a white hat hackers. Then we have in between gray hat hackers that comes in white hat as well as in the black hat as well. Like in the morning, they are doing a good job, but at night, who knows that they are doing black hat kind of things. Then the term uh, that often used script kitties. This could be even me, this could be you, or this could be any person who even does not have any knowledge about uh, the hacking. So what these uh, guys do, uh, they will download third party softwares, okay, third party um, applications or some scripts, and they will run uh just to attack the appliances or hardware or devices so these are known as the script kitties then we have disgruntled employer as i have already mentioned that if some person in the organization is not happy so he could also be a potential threat for an organization So let's talk about these viruses, Trojan horses a little in detail. So what is virus? A computer virus is a type of malware that propagates by inserting a copy of itself into and becoming a part of another program. So as the virus, you know, uh, enters inside the computer, it just spread itself, just creating the multiple copies and copies and copies uh, into the system. So it's spread from one computer to another computer as well. So you might be familiar if one computer is infected and you just plug some USB uh, 
device or external hard disk device, you will notice that uh, that will also be corrupted. So that which is because of uh, this virus, because it has a nature of spreading automatically. So leaving infectious as it travels. Virus can range in severity from causing mildly annoying effects, damaging data or software, causing, for example, like the denial of service conditions as well. So of course, if in computer, if virus has attacked some of your files or application, of course, uh, you will not be able to uh, use those softwares or application. So it kind of denial of service as condition as well. Then ransomware, as uh, the HEFA uh, said correctly, that ransomware is a type of malicious software that threatens to publish the victim's data or perpetually block access to unless it, a random, uh, sorry, ransom is paid. So ransomware is what, and I have, uh, I, I have been the victim of this ransomware as well. I had so many images, applications, and you know, videos, uh, application softwares were in my computer. Um, so once this ransomware attacked my computer, for example, if uh, the image is there, let's say, let's say the image name is 123.jpg. And the one video file name is like video dot mp4 or dot avi. So what this ransomware will do, it will just do the encryption, which is the strongest one. It will do the encrypt encryption and will encrypt this whole image or the file into something like garbage x123 dot some some with some extension even if you try to change this extension to jpeg it won't work when you will try to open this file you will get a kind of you know a pop up it's mentioned that if you want to recover this file um, you have to pay using this bitcoin something like that and usually these people, they use dark web. And dark web, as the name suggests, uh, just like www. Okay, this is another thing, like you will use a Tor browser to X or with the help of some VPN services. If this service is blocked, then you will use Tor or in combination of the VPN to access this dark web and you can access, you know, some hidden websites. And this is where people do all this, uh, you know, when they hide, well, sorry, they steal something, they want to sell it now. That's where the dark web uh, websites are there to, to do this kind of uh, transaction between each other. Uh, very scary stuff, but that is how they are making money right now. Exactly. And that is the reason uh, ransomware attacks, uh, if you want to pay, you will have to pay from dark web using Bitcoin or whatever the method, method they have defined. If I'm not mistaken, um, the dark web is different than the deep web and the deep web is where... Exactly, both are same. Happen. No, these are same things. Yeah, deep web, dark web. Uh, but the like dark web is not always, it's not always negative things. Sometimes no, it is not. No, no, no. Yeah, Sometimes, well, most of uh, most of the time, it's kind of like it is negative. But yeah, in some places, because look, if it's a if it's a government that you want to hide yourself from, but you're doing a good stuff, like good cause type of thing, right? Then yeah, people do use it for that purposes too, because then they don't want you don't want to be tracked by them. So yes, it, it can be used that way. Yeah. So even if you want, you can put your web server on the dark web as well, if you want. Even the botnets, you know, most of the botnets and these all script kitties. This, uh, in uh, earlier slide, I talked about the script kitties. You can I download. Just wanna, I just want to verify. I don't, one other thing is that this, I think what Hefa was asking, um, deep web is kind of like the, the, what do you call it? Like the umbrella of 
that. So dark web would be like a part of it. So it's not like a, it's a part of it, but it's not the same thing. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like a big, you, you can say the term. So okay. there are many other uh, terminologies under deep web because that's a pretty, uh, you know, that's the whole dark side of it, basically. It's like a broad terminology. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you pay from dark web to this ransomware person, uh, they are not going to communicate with you. Okay, so they are just making you fool with that. Then we have this Trojan, as I mentioned, it's a harmful piece of software that looks legitimate. Users are typically tricked into loading and executing it on their system. For example, popping up windows, changing desktop, deleting files, something like that. So it will appear as a pop-up on your web browser somewhere. And like, you know, sometime they ask you, there is a virus in your computer. So, so this is a free software, just download it. And basically that, uh, 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 that application is having these harmful uh, trojans as well. So you are not only installing that software, but also these trojans as well. Then we have bots and um, we do remember, we talked about zombies and bots uh, in a denial of services as well as the DDoS. So basically in DDoS, it's uh, most of the time we use these bots. So what are these? These are like, as I mentioned, the, the, the word, word came from, derived from the word robot and is automated process that interacts with other network services. Bots often automate tasks and provide information or service that would otherwise be conducted by human being. A typical use of bot is to gather information. So this is the typical use, gathering the information. Yeah. Other and than also, that- And yeah. also it's being used in a normal, kind of like a web crawler type of bots where you have Google and let's say we have job skills share website, Google will have kind of a crawler of bots. So they do is indexing your website. So you yeah. have a new content, you put it on a website, there's going to be different bots from Yahoo, from Microsoft, from, you know, Google, from so many other big, uh, yeah. and then there are just normal bots out there that will just gather information, put it on the web, uh, and so for that reason, you would have a better structural uh, approach when you're building a website. So then it's not always bots running on your website, right? So if you don't want too much of that kind of traffic, then you can make some kind of structure on your website to tell the bot that this is my data. This is how I want to give it to you. And this is how you should get it. So a lot of people confuses these two with this and other bots are just what it's used for. Like they would have network bots that try to uh, look for information for malicious, malicious purposes. Yeah. Then this slide continues and we have APT advanced persistent threats. And uh, I do remember I discussed this in earlier slides as well. So it's a set of stealthy and continuous uh, computer hacking process often orchestrated by a person per uh, targeting a specific entity. And APT usually targets either private organizations, states, or both of the business political mot motives. So uh, if you are familiar, you can uh, search out about the Stuxnet Stux as well. This time here, Stuxnet. Uh, this is kind of APT threat that deployed in Iranian Oh, I was just going to say, is this the one that uh, disarmed the Iranian, um, what was exactly. it? Uh, yeah. yeah. That was Iranian uh, uh, a power plant, I think, or this is what's called for... Uh, nuclear, uh, I think. Nuclear. I think nuclear it disarmed plants. the re nuclear reactor. Exactly, exactly. So that, that was a nuclear uh, plant. And, you know, these APT were like install a kind of root kit as a root kit. And what root kit is like if you are going to install some kind of hardware in your computer, like a hard disk, a VGA card or something, uh, they will, you know, they will uh, penetrate this root kit into that. So they can check the activities, everything. So, you know, uh, that was the Stuxnet as a virus, uh, or the rootkit installed in those nuclear 
plants their appliances basically and you know uh, that basically uh, like uh, made that uh, hardware devices like they heat up those devices and then cool down heat up and cool down something like that and it was like a fault and uh, they had to shut down that plant for the time being so this is like you know advanced persistent threat Then we have an ad where, as the name suggests, it's like kind of advertisement, like software that generates revenue for its developer by automatic, automatically generating online advertisement. So it will also like, you know, make you fool, making you fool into thinking that this is something like legitimate uh, website or something like that. But once you will go there, uh, it will be something else and um, you will end up by downloading some kind of uh, malicious softwares. Then we have a backdoors, an undocumented way of accessing a system. Of course, um, it, it will not be documented by the way. So what hackers they will do, uh, for example, we do remember in Microsoft Word, we had one icon which is mentioned macro. basically used to you know automate the thing so these uh, hackers they took the benefit of this macro and they uh, uh, like uh, they penetrated these kind of viruses as a backdoor so you know once they will run this macro maybe some port behind the scene will be open let's say like telnet port before it was closed but now telnet port is open with just by running this macro. So now this backdoor is open and the hacker basically can take the benefit of this backdoor and can access the system. Then we have these DOS and DDoS attacks, malicious attempts by one or more people to cause the victim site or note deny services to its customer and I have already uh, talked about this as well. So let's talk about the IDS and IPS. So what are the benefits of using IDS and IPS? These are basically the hardware appliances. This is known as intrusion detection and intrusion preventions. So benefits of using IDS and IPS are since this is a sensor monitor usual uh, unusual suspicious activities so whatever the uh, suspicious activities are uh, approaching this device it will just keep monitoring those it will perform analysis to identify violations incidents and possible attempt attacks ids and ips could be host or network based uh, which will send logs to the central centralized log repository machine for SOC team to analyze so IDS will detect and generate log while IPS will prevent the attack. So what basically it is saying, sometime we have network based uh, IDS and uh, in the next slide, it is uh, basically, I'm going to give you uh, a little more detail, but uh, just as an overview, uh, as mentioned, the there is a host base as well. If, you, if I give you host based uh, example of IDS or IPS, just like we have antivirus, any kind of antivirus installed. It is a host based, means whatever the information that is being generated from your own machine, it will very quickly will, it will uh, you know, uh, get the idea or will sense about that suspicious activities and will block. While on other hand, we has the network based. The network based not only for the particular host, but it will be like in between device. And then we have multiple LAN host. And let's say this is IDS or IPS sensor device installed, uh, which is connected with the router. And then router is connected with the, some ISP, let's say. So whatever the information as that coming in or going outside, this is the responsibility of IDS or IPS to sense or to monitor. 
but sometime as it is mentioned the ids is will only detect about these logs means it will not take any kind of action like ips will do so ips is a complete you know solution it will not only detect but pro prevent from those attacks as well but in case of ids the what possibility could be ids sensor will just sense those issues for example there are some multiple issues arrive and then this ids when then will be connected with some kind of firewall so these logs will be sent to the firewall and then firewall will have kind of database or the signature kind of things so it will keep update and will prevent those logs so this is known as like uh the centralized log repository machine identify incidents could be so what incidents it will uh, uh, handle it will handle this ips or ids like trojans denial of service at attacks we have active and passive attacks as well sql injections then cross site scripting as well reconnaissance attacks this is also another name of social engineering by the way social engineering then we have insider attacks and unauthorized logins as well so the possibility is some person inside the organization there is another pc so this person is trying to access this system because um, this person is sitting inside the organization and he has very good knowledge about this system so once it we will or he or she will try to access this system the log will be generated into ips device and system admin can uh, get those logs and will take the action so uh as i mentioned in the earlier slide as well this is host based intrusion detection and this is network based intrusion detection so host based monitor only single host network based monitor whole network since ids is on the host operating system work much faster and of course if if this host based intrusion detection is on this uh, system itself it will work much more faster than this one which is network based ids system because the action will be take, taken directly on this host machine while if this host machine is being attacked then first it will go to this ids machine first of all then it will take the action and maybe then we have thousand and thousand of devices connected and this single host uh, network based ids system is taking care of these all devices so you just can imagine the impact yeah and and, and so for we use like currently in the modern world you have everything kind of separate solution for network you got you got to have a network solution in place for endpoints you're going to have that network taking care of the network side but then when the endpoint is going to be some kind of agents running on it whether exactly. it's connected to the network again to do something or maybe a cloud solution for example we already talked about cisco amp protection remember last uh, last uh, lecture we talked about windows defender solution these days so it goes to the cloud now so if people are because these people may have a very uh you know uh knowledgeable or experts sitting out there uh, doing this kind of stuff so then this will uh lower the stress of a normal network engineer because you may be working for a company and hey you know am i going to really do some kind of uh, analysis now and try to understand what's going on or should we go for some product that they already have a very solid team out there and they can do these things for them so this is a mixed environment these days so we we have both now network we have endpoints we have even cloud protection these days so yeah. you 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 use everything together to kind of counter uh different attacks uh, and protections out there yeah so uh, what uh, danish said if i give you example and you can take it as a assignment as well uh which is uh, known as ibm q radar
So basically what happens in IIP in Curada? We have like thousand and thousand of devices. So the agent, which uh, Dani just uh, talked about, the agent will be installed on every host machine. And then we have, let's say this is the IBM hardware appliance here. Okay, so it's a functionality is just collecting those uh, data from the agents. So agents are basically just like a host based uh, intrusion prevention systems. Basically they are just, uh, you know, uh, getting those um, uh, logs or pulling those logs and sending it to the, uh, this main device, which will take the action. So you can further read on IPM Curator how it works, and then you will have a better understanding about these agents and then we have a signature based ideas, and we are familiar that uh, uh, if we if we talk if, even if in your computer, uh, if you go to uh, like if for example, not on antivirus or some another kind of antivirus in, install, you will see they have kind of database that is sitting outside in the cloud, okay? It will have kind of signatures, you know, uh, every virus that comes have a signature. So basically when the data comes inside your host machine or any device, uh, your antivirus basically going to match the pattern against these signatures. If it is fine, it will like it will be sent into the quarantine or maybe it will be deleted. So they have like these kind of database and multiple these signatures. So that's why you know uh, this is a very good practice every time uh, you log in, you need to go into the antivirus software and just update, uh, the application or the that signature database either automatically or forcefully. So it will resync with the latest updates of the signature databases. So if any kind of new virus, Trojan or malware will hit your uh, computer device, it will just uh, check from the pattern. If the pattern is matched, this will be blocked. The virus will be blocked or will be deleted. So as mentioned that uh, Cisco based IDS appliances primarily use signature based IDS. As the traffic passes through, it detects a pattern, but it should be resynced with the databases. Signature engine, the parser read all the test description of the signature looks for a malicious active activities in a network stream. So IDS use signature database with several signature engines. So it has multiple signature engines that it will pull the data from. Then we have monitoring and analysis. Of course, um, um, some person required to check the monitoring or analysis for uh, whatever is happening in the uh, IPS or IDS. It means the human interaction is also required. Although IPS or IDS will do it uh, automatically, everything will be done. But of course, we need kind of human interaction to check what is going on, what are the logs. Maybe sometime one thing is known as uh, false positive. False positive. Like maybe uh, IDS is thinking that that is a virus, but that is not basically. That is something else that is. Uh, being used in our network as well. So that thing is known as a false positive. So that thing is like basically uh, you can capture from monitoring and doing monitoring and analysis. Basically, which has multiple logs, you can go through those logs one by one, or you can filter out those logs and then you can find out whatever that you are looking for. So basically what is saying IDS and IPS, IPS are cons Currently gathering data. So the network administrator has a lot of tools to manage all the data, like generating using IPS IDS 
reporting via SDD, which is Security Device Event Exchange. Uh, basically, that is, uh, you know, it's mentioned here. While SD is a protocol, basically it is a protocol that sends message between the security devices and monitoring systems. So we have this security device here. Let's say AS firewall. Then we have one kind of, let's say IDS, intrusion detection system. Or could be some monitoring device monitoring system like uh, uh, one of uh, very famous is like Alerta, which I will show you. So the Alerta will generate the logs and will send those data to who? The ASA to take some action. So that thing which will perform these things like coming back and forth these information is done using S double SDWE protocol. Then gathering via syslogs, of course, uh, the syslog itself is a like it's a protocol that will gather all the logs information. If we talk about uh, if you are familiar with the uh, Nagios, Then we have a solar winds as well. Yeah, and, and then solar wind is very famous when it comes to logs and stuff like that because it's the company is used for that type of work, like monitoring, management, things like that, and other tools too. Because uh, it depends on how deep you have to work on this type of work in your environment. Uh, but I can guarantee you that you have to use some type of tools in network engineering jobs, like the logs, syslogs, whether you use solar winds, you have to know how to go back to the logs. It's just that you will get stuck so many times in your career, uh, at, like at firewall level, or maybe something normal. People just can't get into something because there's something going on, but you have to know the answer, right? You have to get okay, somebody's doing this one thing, somebody's trying to log into somewhere, but they're not able to do it. And another security person says, oh, you know what? I'm not blocking this from a, let's say filter level. I'm not blocking that on, on my firewall. And then you'll be, you'll be like scratching your head. Okay, now I need to get back to the logs. Okay, I need to know why from, from first connection to the last action, I wanna see what happens. And that is where you need to know these tools like solar winds or things like that uh, nature, so. It's very important, yeah. by the way. And uh, by the way, these syslogs, even in a Cisco uh, router switches, easily you can, if you enable debug with a debug command, these syslogs will be generated and you can take a look. And I hope uh, in uh, this uh, session, we are gonna do that as well. I will show you how debugs look like. And then we have analysis via SIEM. That is also a very good term and interview question as well. They ask what is SIEM, which is stand for security information and event management system, which I talked about earlier, like IBM Q radar. Q radar. That is a, uh, that is a device uh, for security information and event management. So whatever the event or uh, logs will be generated, will be sent to this IBM Q radar to for a deep inspection. So it's mentioned how things work. First, you know, IDS will generate an alarm when an attack signature is triggered. Then alarm will be stored and can be examined locally or using some other applications, which I'm gonna show later, uh, which could be like uh, ZLAN, for example, your local firewalls, logs, you can view your logs using ZLAN. Then we have Splunk as well. Okay, so these are third party applications. After an attack signature fires, the device uh, can send syslog message using SDE, which I have already mentioned. 